Now on the APEC VIP hotline, cutting edge training for the serious athlete, APECGO.com. Joining us now, the head football coach of the state-bound Dangerfield Tigers, Eric Sardinia. How you doing, coach? I'm doing very well. Now, uh, when I talked to you off the air just a few seconds ago, you were trying to—you said you were trying to not be too busy. What's going on this week? Well, you know, we just got—you know—we're trying to get ready for our state, say, state championship, and <laughs> you know, and you got um, the communities, you know, excited. Uh, you know, the radio stations, the media, the uh, the uh, you know, scouts, everybody's all excited. Uh, you know, we we still got a plan for a football game. <laughs> How much of a difference is this week compared to normal weeks? Well, it's just you know, it's just a few more things you had to deal with UIL um, information, and you know, it, you know, now that the games in two A, the last two years have been at Cowboy Stadium, and so um, it just yeah, it just adds a little bit more um, to already a compacted schedule from one week, you know, from week one to week fourteen or fifteen. So you know, you just um, you just gotta you, you know, I, I you know my. Uh, my my information is just you know we got to make sure that the kids are getting what they need and and uh, you know not getting too high and not getting too low either. <laughs> Boy, that's got to be a real balancing act then, huh? Sure it is. And, you know that's why we you know that's why we we're the administrators and we're the ones who have to uh, balance it all off. But uh, you know you got to do your best at at, at, at both. So uh, you know just try to make sure the kids stay focused and uh, and we stay our coaches stay focused and our community uh, you know just continue doing what they're doing and it's exciting for them. Now, when you played in the semifinals against Wall last weekend, uh, you trailed 22-14 to 14 at halftime. How worried were you that things might be coming to an end right there? Well, you know, you, you got to keep playing. I mean, we, you know, we, we, you know, we had a tough game against New Boston, and, and, and uh, you know, so, uh, you know, as a football coach, you know, and you, and it's, you know, you got to do this with the kids too. You just have to stay focused on one play to the next, and and uh, you know, every game comes down to two or three plays here and there. And um, at that time, you know, when we came back out at halftime, you know, we got some turnovers, and 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 it changed the ball game at that time, and so. Um, you know, as long as you believe and you continue to play, um, there's you know you, you, there's no pressure until there's no no numbers on that clock except zeros. You gave up 215 yards of offense in the opening half. What were they doing that was giving you some difficulty? Well, you know, you know they it was alignment wise. You know, they did some things um, as far as spreading us out and and uh, creating some scenes for their their skilled athletes and uh, you know their offensive line was really good we knew they going in you know um, you know that's why we watch the film and we try to give that information to to uh, you know to others but you know they they're um, they're a good football team and and um, you know they like you said I mean they, you know those guys they had us um, down and and um, they had a lot of momentum and we turned that we we turned the momentum and it helped us because our kids feed off of that stuff what did you do at halftime? What kind of adjustments did you make? Because you shut them down to 86 second-half yards, and you also forced a couple of turnovers. Well, our kids just tackled well. Uh, you know, we got kids that, that are just playmakers, and they were able to, to uh, you know, rip the ball out of one of the young men's hands. And I think they had a, a for, unforced turnover um, early as well, and, and we just capitalized on it. You know, we went in at halftime. Um, you know, our big thing was to go back out and tackle well and get our feet underneath us and not overrun, you know, their their talented running back. And, you know, their quarterback was uh, checking plays off and, and getting his kids and, you know, his, his uh, team in the right positions. And when you can do that as a, as a, um, as a football team, uh, you know, it, it just it gives you a better opportunity. Now, you completely turned it around almost right there at the very beginning of the second half when Jonathan Barber uh, jumped on a loose ball uh, to open the second half and that sets you up at the 24 yard line uh and Cordarius Anderson takes it to the house there you add a two-point conversion and, and just like that it's tied up and you've only 18 seconds into the third quarter at that point that that seemed to be the thing that turned the whole deal around right there's no doubt about it and that's that's basically you know I saw how the kids were excited and you know if you if you had a camera on coach Sardinia he, he, he wasn't <laughs> as excited uh he was excited but again you just have to you know, I you know I look at you know any game situation. Um, you know, there's some excitement in it, but you you have to stay focused. And uh, you know, at that time when that happened, uh, when Jonathan um, was able to recover that turnover, you know, immediately I just you know went to uh, what we had talked about at halftime and and um, being able to run the football a little bit more effective and and uh, we could put him in a position and he he uh, he was able to do that. So uh, it, it just you know again it's just situational football. And at that time we just felt like that that was a better situation for 
us to run it right then, and um, and uh, you know it could have went a different way. You just you just got to play your situations and and, uh, and give your kids a chance. And then you get another fumble recovery, and then Edwin Mims takes it to the house. Right, right. You know, just putting putting Edwin in, in positions to to um, you know to go out and and uh, and run the football is, is a very very it's very important to our our football team. Um, you know, and it's amazing how many times. Um, that he's able to to make plays in you know at, at that quarterback position, but at the same time, um, you know and uh, you know he can throw it down the field. Um, and, and in this game that we're you know we're about to face, you know we need to look at him throwing the ball down the field a little bit more. And uh, so that's just something that that uh, we have to do as a staff to try to put him in positions to just be that playmaker, whether he's throwing it or running it. Now you use him at three different positions, right? You use him at quarterback, running back, and receiver. That's right. And wh- how do you determine where you're going to line him? up <laughs> well i don't want to give too much but uh it's all again it's all situational football um you know it's uh, uh it's a feel you know i play I, you know my play calling is all a feel um and you know we do all the work monday through thursday and, and it's all a feel uh, but uh you know you know we we just want to um you know give give all of our kids an opportunity to um and that's why we're so multi multi-formation uh, offense you know we're multiple um, what we do we can put the kids in positions just to make plays and let the quarterbacks determine all the rest of that what do you know about Cameron Yo? well they're very good um, on the defensive side they got a really good defensive line really good front seven uh, they uh, you know they highlight their nose tackle he's an all-state nose tackle and does a really good job and um, he's done that for three years now, and um, you know, on the offensive side, um, they're a spread offense. Um, they're gonna they're gonna take what the offense, what the defense gives them, and um, you know, they're gonna throw it, throw it, and and uh, they're gonna run it. So they're they're really good mix. They're a really good football team. What do you see as being the key matchup in this ball game? It's gonna be a nose tackle. It's gonna how how well we neutralize him and and uh, and not make, you know allow him to make a lot of plays. Um, you know, that kid's really good. And, I think that's probably the number one thing there. And then on, on offense, for our offense, defensively, we're going to have to just limit their big plays. And then how do you get your kids prepared? I know they've been to state championships before. This is the fourth time in five years. But the, won't this be the first time they've played at Cowboy Stadium? Well, <clears throat> I've played uh, – well, not played. I've coached there. And, okay. um, and so I've, I've given them a few uh, clues on what they need to – be looking for and and uh, you know there's a lot of hype behind Cowboy Stadium, but you know it's 100 yards. Uh, you know the the venue behind the 100 yards is what's what's you know spectacular. But uh, you know we, we gotta uh, you know be able to go in and and, uh, and and just just you know get those distractions out of our mind because in that in that venue there's a lot of distractions with with all the all the media and all the things that go on. With Jerry he likes to highlight as far as what he you know how he how he advertises and, and those those things can be distracting. So I've already cued the keys on uh, the kids on that and, and just explain to them how uh, you know the scoreboards are really hard to, to to see in there. And so uh, you know it's a lot of little things like that. You're on an NFL football uh, field and you know the hashes or the numbers are different and, and uh, you have to find where the numbers will be. So it's a lot of little things like that that are important. That a lot of people don't see, but uh, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna execute offensively and defensively and we're gonna try to try to win the state championship. Do you get to work out on that field at all before the state championship game? No, so we will not, but uh, we, we plan on getting there early enough to be able to go out and and, uh, and just kind of get the feeling out, out of our system and so we get ready for a game, <laughs> you know. All right, what about playing at noon? That's something you haven't done all year. How do you prepare for that? Well, you can't prepare for that. Uh, you know, there's no way you can prepare for that except – uh, just you know, tell the kids it's no different. You know, that's what you got to tell the kids. You got they got to believe it. And, and uh, you know, we 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 don't practice at noon, so uh, you know, Cameron Yo is going to have to have that same feeling. I don't know when they practice, but yeah, uh, you know, I know they don't practice. Uh, uh, you know, at noon, you would think that's about lunchtime. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure that uh, they you know they're going to have to go through the same thing. And hey, it's football. You know, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, the kids going to go out and play. Um, and you can't you can't make an excuse for anything. You know that we played at eight o'clock in the morning. That's the time we're going to play. You feel good about your chances? Well, sure we do. I and mean, you know we we we've been flying high. You know we <laughs> you know we feel like we can beat anybody. Um, you know it doesn't. You know we're you know from from the, from August and going into the first ball game against Gladewater and losing that game and up until through you know, through district and losing to New Boston and then you know and, and basically on a nice little win streak now. 
you you got to feel good. You, you know, you can't. You, you know, and the kids feel confident, and, and um, so um, you know, there's no doubt about it. It's all about game plan and what you see on film and how you feel like your kids are right now. And our kids are feeling pretty good right now. Well, they should feel pretty good, Coach. You guys have done a great job. We wish you the best of luck on Friday, and uh, we hope we can talk to you about a state championship later on. All right, thanks, guys. Sure appreciate it, and uh, appreciate you guys having me. Merry Christmas to you too, Coach. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas uh, to you guys as well. Thank you, sir. Eric Sardin. The head football coach at Dangerfield on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM.